Hello and welcome to Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes Grand Arena Championships, Season 21, Week 3, Round 3. My name is Boma Fett. I'm undefeated so far this season. Let's see who my opponent is this round. Targon. Let's go to the Hotbot for a quick comparison. The Hotbot shows my side is almost completely green and there are just a few little spots of red on Targon's side. So let's zoom in and take a closer look. In the top section, the first thing that jumps out to me is the Guild GP. It's a little bit on the low side, 221 million. That's about 90 million less than my Guild's GP, and this is going to have a negative effect on Targon's roster. His current score is 30,000, which isn't terrible. It's about 5,000 less than mine. His best score of 40,000, I think he may break that, this GAC. Lifetime banners of 580,000 is not terrible, but not particularly great. He only has 38 full clears, which is definitely on the low side. That may mean that he plays more of a defensive game. He's got 383 defends, which also seems kind of on the low side to me. And his offensive wins, 1,347. That's not bad, but it's not great. The ratio here between the defense and offensive wins, this is about 28%. That's a little on the low side. So 38 clears suggests that he plays a more defensive game, but the ratio between the defense to offensive wins suggests that he plays more of an offensive game. Now, unfortunately, Targon is not on SWGOH.GG, so there's no GAC history to reference. This is a huge hole in this system that I really wish they would fix. It's probably not even on anybody's radar at this point. They created GAC histories mostly so that you can check your opponents and make sure that they're not cheating. But it is also a way of scouting your opponents so that you can prepare for your match and having some people's history available online while other people's is not, is just not fair. So I really wish they'd fix that. In the roster summary, it shows that I have about a quarter million overall GP advantage. I also have a higher top 80 and top 65. I've got 19 more Zetas and a ton more speed at the top of my roster. More than double when you're looking at gear 11 and above, and almost double when you're looking at top 80. I have five more gear 13 characters, one more gear 12, and 26 more gear 11 and above. I've got a small advantage as far as 6 dot mods and a huge advantage as far as mods with high speed secondaries. He has a small advantage when it comes to mods with high offensive percent secondaries. Now even though I have 5 more gear 13 characters, Targon has nearly 30 more total relic levels, 160 to 131. You can see that he relics up a lot more characters to tier 5 and above and leaves very few at tier 1 to 2. The meta character section shows that neither one of us has a Galactic Legend, nor Commander Ahsoka Tano, but Targon is also missing Jedi Knight Luke. In the key characters and important ships, we see the impact of that low guild GP. We've got a 5 star Watt Tambor, and no Malevolence. Let's go back to the game and take a closer look at Targon's roster. So Targon is running a gas squad in the arena, and the negotiator in the fleet arena. Here are Targon's relic characters, and it is all the usual suspects, a very balanced set of characters here, light side and dark side alike. A bit unusually, we do have all of the Geonosians relict. We've got a relic Mace Windu and a relic Sith Assassin. Scrolling all the way to the bottom of the roster, this is where we find 3PO and Chewie. Our resistance heroes are down here. Moff Gideon, Admiral Piet. Omega, Dark Trooper. The rest of the Bad Batch is down here. So there are some of the really good newer characters that Targon has not really worked on yet. But there are a couple of factions that also stand out as being a little bit under geared. So here you can see the First Order is mostly gear 8, including Kylo Ren Unmasked, Kylo and Hux, even though they have the Zetas. 
Sith Trooper is still gear one or gear two. Even though he has Beskar Mando and he's put the Zetas on, he's only gear nine. Bounty Hunter Mando is only gear eight and Jango Fett is only gear seven. And in the Resistance, not only are the Resistance heroes not geared up, but he hasn't even unlocked Jedi Training Rey. So no JTR on this roster. So while any roster at this GP is going to have some holes, Targon's holes are not huge. Resistance, First Order. But the rest of the factions have been geared up and relicked up very well. All right, we've got just over five and a half hours left in the attack phase. Targon attacked while I was sleeping overnight. So let's take a look at the board. Targon has cleared three of my zones. Now, because there was no GAC history on Targon, I just let my defense roll over from last round. So in this zone, I have Darth Revan, Jedi Knight Luke, and Savage Malak. But it looks like Targon had no trouble here, one shot on each of these squads. In the top, we have one shot against Bosk and Poggle, but two to get through both Newt and Bam. The fleet zone was cleared with no real issues. And in the bottom zone, you can see five against the Night Sister Cheese. Didn't attempt Grievous. Two against Fin Fin Po. One shots on both Zam and Hux. Let's take a look at his defense. His defense is actually tougher than I expected based on his statistics. We've got a Phoenix squad. We've got Jedi Revan, but this is almost more of a Jedi Revan timeout squad because we have GK and Jolie here instead of having offensive characters. But Revan can hit decently hard, so it's not a complete timeout team. Then we have Bastila, Grandmaster Yoda, and Juhani. So this is probably almost as tough as the Revan squad. We've got the extra defense from Basti. We've got offense from Grandmaster Yoda. We've got a taunt from Juhani, although she's only gear 12. So this is no pushover of a squad. And then Thrawn, Tarkin, and TIE Pilot. In the bottom zone, we've got HK with B2 and Droidica. That's a really interesting squad. I'm going to have to do a little research on HK's leadership and see what I can expect from this squad, but they are all relict. And I already know HK and Droidica both hit really hard and B2 does the dispelling and the debuffing. So this could be a tricky squad. We've got a Darth Revan squad, but no Malak. Instead, we have Sith Assassin, which is really interesting. They're all Relic 5, but they are slow. Let me show you this. On Darth Revan here, you can see that he has speed mods. But look, this diamond has no speed secondaries. The cross, no speed secondaries. No speed secondary on the square. Here we have just 10 speed on the circle and no speed on the triangle. Now he does have a speed arrow here. So this is 32 speed plus 10 speed, only 42 speed. So you're not getting a whole lot out of that extra 10% bonus if you don't have speed secondaries on your mods. And I found this on character after character after character. And at the bottom we have Shock T with clones. It's Echo and Arc, but they are Relic. So eight out of nine characters in this zone with Relics. So this defense is certainly no pushover. I'm going to go make a plan and come back in just a little bit and make my attacks. All right, we are going to start in the bottom zone. 
And we're going to go against the Darth Revan squad. And we're going to take General Skywalker with fives and Rex. Now often I will keep fives and Rex for their own squad and just use Rex in this lineup if I need the extra speed, which I don't. But I'm doing this lineup because fives can call General Skywalker to assist and get him some extra attacks that way. I want to go after Basti first. Didn't quite get her down. And that does it. Goodbye, Revan. So this will be a 51. I'm fine with that. I don't need to be particularly efficient in this matchup. I just need to clear. Against the HK squad, I'm going to go with Padme. We'll get some protection up. We'll get rid of those buff immunities. Flip them to protection. Uh, let's get rid of B2 if we can. HK does a lot of damage against, um, against Jedi, so it's a little risky taking Jedi in here. Big hit there from Droidica. He's in damage immunity. This should get rid of that. A little more protection up. And 53. Against the shock clones, I'm going to take Wedge, Han, and Chewie. Gonna see if we can delete shock. There we go, she's only gear 12. We'll go after Arc next. We can kill him before he can get his uh, his turret out. That would be a bonus. There we go. Fifty-two. Perhaps I should have gone after Echo because he had the AOE. That's all right. Let's see what's in the back. We've got a Bosque squad, two Ewok squads, and two Night Sister squads. Okay, I'm going to take a few minutes to make a plan, and I will come back and finish up in a bit. All right, we're going to go to the top zone. And I'm going to go against Jedi Revan with my own Jedi Revan squad. I'll go after Revan first. Nice thing about using Revan here against Revan. Um, is that GK is going to be taunting, auto-taunting, a lot. And with Revan's mark, I can get around that. Let's steal those buffs and spread them. We need to go after Jolie next so that he can't revive. I'm going to be stuck hitting Kenobi a bit. So we get the mark from Revan again. We'll swap this to Yoda. 
steal the buffs again. Spread the buffs again. Okay, now we can mark Jolie. We'll call Revan to assist here. Oh, they marked Yoda. That's not good. Call Yoda to assist. Big hit. Call Yoda to assist. Let's steal some buffs. Spread some buffs. Mark Jolie again. Got to get through this Jolie, man. I wonder if I should kill Revan. And then come back to Jolie. We've almost got him. Yes, excellent. Okay. Now we go after Revan. Spread the buffs. Mark Revan. Okay, we're good. Let's call... Yoda, let's see if we can get our protection healed up. Big hit here. Let's call... Spread some more foresight. We'll mark him. Running out of time here, just need to get the kill at this point. Fifty four. I did say that was a timeout team, didn't I? This Basti Yoda team has me a little bit scared. I'm not sure what I have that can take that out. I'm going to try my CLS with 3PO and 2PO. I'm going to put the Confuse on Juhani. do this so that we can get around the taunt. I'm going to put blind on them. I'm actually surprised I was able to land that on two of them given that they had protection up, meaning they had tenacity up. It was actually kind of a dumb move, but it worked out for me. Ooh, big hits from Yoda. Let's go AOE. Blind worked on them again. That's excellent. Put the confuse over here. There we go. Some protection back. Oh, 
All right, 52. A little bit scary there for a second. Got through it. Against this Phoenix squad, I'm going to go with a Wampa Solo. This may be a little bit risky, but without Zeb and Sabine on the other side, I think that this should work. Oh, Ezra. How you like that? Fifty-six. Even with all those Ezra hits there, still no problem. Against this Empire Squad. We'll do this. Empire versus Empire. Start with a Force Crush. Merciless. And I'm going to slow this down to see how much damage it does after the nerf. 91k. That's not terrible, but that's not anywhere close to what it used to do. Flip this back to Vader. 54. See what fleets are in the back. We've got kind of a Tarkin hodgepodge and rebels. The Tarkin fleet does have the TIE bomber, so taking my rebels against that is a little bit iffy, but it really doesn't look like a scary fleet. So I think I'm going to go rebels there and negotiator against the home one, but we'll come back to this. I'm going to start off here against this bottom Night Sister squad with Tal's in lead. And we'll be taking our Kylo Ren unmasked with Fox and Watt. Now they have nerfed Watt's kit, but they did not take away the important part. So we put the taunting tech there, at least not for this counter. I know it's the important part for a lot of other things, but for this counter, the important part of the weapons tech is that it prevents revives. Uh, we'll go ahead and stun there. Now we'll go after Mother Talzin. very annoying that even while stunned, the zombie gets its taunt. Like, how, how does that work? How does a stunned individual taunt? Need the kills to come from Executioner. And he's not going to hit as hard because of the nerf to the, uh, the tech. I may need to level up my Executioner now to make this a more effective counter. Get rid of the Taunt. And get rid of Talzin. Keep healing yourself, Watt. Done there, get rid of the taunt. Get some protection up. The 
Here they taunt again. Yeah, this is definitely taking longer since uh, Executioner's not hitting nearly as hard. Okay, 54. Still works. Just a little bit iffy. If there had been a high health Daka in there, I might have timed out. Against the Chirpa led Ewoks, I'm going to go with a Nest Solo. There's no low gray on the other side to daze, so this should work. Target Wicket and put it on auto. Against the Bosk Squad, I'm going to take my Jedi Training Ray. We'll start off trying to stun Dengar. Nope. Even when he doesn't have tenacity up, it seems like he has tenacity up. We'll put the wave on boss. And we're stuck going after boss. If I hit Dengar, he goes stealth. We'll, we'll try and stun him again. Nope. Wave him down again. Let's put burning up. Now grief is available. Wave boss again. That banner stealer Dengar. Get the bye Bosk. No stun. Okay, we got the stun on grief at least. Let's wave Dengar. Illuminated Destiny, it's not going to be enough to recover banners, but it's okay. Against the Night Sisters, I'm going to take my Imperial Troopers. Nishit is very low level. We should be able to get rid of her real quick. And I know Daka will just bring her back, that's okay. We've got our turn meter train rolling now. So Daka didn't even get a chance. 54. And against Tebow. We'll go Basti. Ezra and Kanan. Get 
give the buffs to Ezra. Call Basti. Put up a taunt. Or keep up a taunt, rather. See if we can stun Tebow. Big hit. Goodbye, Tebow. We'll call Basti. And that should do it. 54. All right, so I'm at 2521 to 2342. Well, let's keep going. Try and get rid of the bomber before it can get out the burning. Big hit. Not quite. This may do it. Oh, I didn't get enough assists. Darn it. Well, that's frustrating. Let's go ahead and bring in the Phantom so that I can get in another... That way I can get in another reinforcement more quickly. Uh, let's wiggle an AoE. Nice. Do I want to bring in another reinforcement, or do I want to heal? Let's heal. Sixty-six. Now, if you've never watched me before, you're probably looking at this going, why is Houndstooth not in either of these lineups or on defense? And I hear you, Houndstooth is one of the best ships, but I leave it with my other bounty hunters as my backup fleet in case one of my fleet attacks fails. Going to go after the Y Wing first. We'll put the buff immunity on Biggs, and this should get rid of the Y Wing. Great. Oh, too many debuffs, and the Falcon cleansed it. All right, let's put up a taunt. Uh, let's see if we can strip turn meter here. Ooh. We'll bring in Plo Koon for some healing. And we'll drive turn meter. More protection up for Anakin. Would it be unending loyalty on Anakin? Phantom is stealth, but it doesn't matter. I can't target the Falcon, so I have to target... Oh, do I do the 
AoE here, or do I bring in another reinforcement? Let's go ahead and do the bombing run. Get rid of the Phantom. I could have saved the bombing run until after that reinforcement was brought in. Might have been the smarter way to play this. Uh, let's bring in Snips. Get rid of Hera. Oh, goodbye Anakin. That's not good. Well, I clearly played this all wrong. 61. Ay ay ay, not good. But it doesn't really matter. 2834 is my total. Targon is at 2342. Even if they come back and take out those last few squads, they are not going to be able to catch me. So I would like to thank Targon for the match, and thank you all for watching. I will see you next time.